Here we are in the UDK editor. Our goal is to create simple smoke rising from this barrel using a single texture made in Photoshop. This texture is a light gray smoke on a black background with an alpha channel which respects its transparency of the texture. But using this texture as it is will lead to few graphical glitches. We can see the problem if we select the texture by using the alpha channel. A black border surrounds the smoke. To fix this, we replace the black color with a gray color, which is the medium value of the smoke texture. This is essential with creating textures for FX. Having a black color is likely to happen for two reasons, the background color and the mid-maps. Let's compare the two smoke textures. The new one has no defects. Once the texture is ready, click the alpha channel and then save the texture in a TGA format with the alpha channel, so check the box to save it in 32 bytes format. Let's go back to UDK to import the texture. Set our material and start on our first effects. This is the folder where all the textures we will use to create our effects. Let's import the texture. Go in the folder where your TGA file is, then import the texture. Open Smoke Signal TGA. The importer asks me what to do with this texture. I check that I'm in the right folder. VFX underscore textures underscore materials. I want to create a translucent material and use the alpha channel information. The unlit shading mode is using less resources for the engine. Lighting a particle can cost a lot of processor and GPU power. When creating material, an extension underscore map will be added. That's the texture we have just imported and the newly created material. The gray and blue squares mean that the material needs to be recompiled. Materials used in this particle systems are different from those created in the static meshes. I connect the RGB channel, the diffuse color, in the emissive channel of the material. As the material is unlit, not doing so will result in a black particle. Then the alpha channel is connected to the opacity channel. This will be okay for now. We'll have to compile the material to use and keep our changes. Now we are creating our first particle system named smoke underscore single in the VFX underscore particle directory. Once the window is open, we can see the default behavior, which is specific to Unreal. I reset all default settings to start from scratch and then add materials to be used. In the required dash material field, click on the small magnifying glass icon or find object. In the VFX texture material package, I select the smoke single matte material Right-click, then copy full name to clipboard. Now that we have a material name reference, I go back to my emitter and paste the path to my material in the required material field. We can see our texture used by the particle system in this preview window on the left. We now need a size reference for our effects. To do so, we add a particle system in the map by dragging and dropping on the top of the barrel. Our effects is in the right place, but has a blue color. Let's hide the actors by pressing G and deselecting all actors by pressing Shift S. In Cascade, the particle editor in UDK, we are going to set up the size and volume of our smoke. Just moving around the interface to have a good view of our effects. Click on the joystick icon if you don't see the effect, but it should be a default since October beta UDK.
Let's start by tweaking the start size of our particle. It's the beginning, but an important step to set the scale of our effects. A bit too big now, but a lot of back and forth is required to set up an effects. To add some volume, I ramp up the vertical speed. Check the results, then double the speed. The height of the smoke is now OK, but we can see the texture repeating or tiling. To fix this, I add a random rotation when the particles spawn. The result would be better. The rendering changes drastically. The values are between 0 and 1, 1 meaning 360 degrees. The height is OK, but the speed of the particle is too fast. Once again, a lot of iterations and back and forth is required. Back in the speed module, I lower it, 180 for example, and add a value of 140 to have some slower rising smoke particles. With randomness, we can have this FX multiple times in our level and it'll never look the same. I also add randomness to the size of the particles by choosing the maximum and minimum values. The movement of the smoke is basic right now. I like the particles to rotate constantly during their lifetime. I add an initial rotation between minus 0.2 and 0.2, and they are now rotating randomly. The particles are popping when they are spawned or when they die. In the color over life menu, the two values are the lifetime of the particles, zero meaning the birth, one being the death. A particle living 10 seconds will have a 0 to 1 birth and death time, so think of this as a percentage. I set up the opacity to 0 in both the beginning and the end of the particle's lifetime. There is no change at all. That's because our material needs some vertex color to control the diffuse color and the opacity of our particles. Once my material is open, I add a multiply of vertex color and link both of them to the diffuse channel and the opacity channel. The vertex color module will take care of the color and the opacity channels, multiplied by the diffuse and alpha channels of the diffuse texture. I compile the material and go back to cascade. The particles are not visible anymore because their opacity has been previously set to zero. One means they are 100% opaque at birth, and zero means totally transparent at their death. We can now see the particles fading away. I tweak the values and timing to have a better result. Zero at birth, opaque at 25% of their lifetime, then they fade away and disappear. Once the transparency is set up, let's change the colors of the particles. XYZ is the RGB in UDK, and 1 means 255 and RGB values. We can see the colors changing as we try different values. I like the particles to be a darker gray at birth than a lighter gray at the end. The particle system has a better behavior now. What's important when creating VFX is to have consistency throughout the level. By giving, for example, a general direction and speed for the wind, we can achieve this. To do so, I add an additional velocity speed on the y-axis, and we will use this for all effects on the map, at least for all environmental effects. I add some speed on the y-axis, for example, a speed of 32. But this is a constant velocity, so all the particles will behave the same over time, which doesn't look good. The smoke is also too fast. It's not realistic enough. So let's change the speed over the lifetime of the particles. I add a velocity by life module. The particle stays at the same place because the default value is zero on all axis. 
by setting these values to 1, we have the previous behavior back. I'd like the particles to have a very slow speed at birth. Speed up the axis on the z-axis vertically, then go with the wind on the y-axis for more realistic behavior. Once the speed has been set to zero at birth, I tweak the values one by one and check the results every time. As the movement is slower now, we have to increase the lifetime value to regain the initial volume and size of the smoke. I will also add some randomness for their lifetime. A lot of back and forth is required as usual to have good results on the screen that matches our need. The smoke works pretty well now, but now we have to optimize the number of particles, which is pretty high for this type of effect. 50 particles are far too much. In the spawn module, reduce the spawn rate from 20 to 10. This will divide the number of particles by 2. Less particle means less coverage on the screen too. So to fix this, I add a size by life and reorganize the order of modules for better visibility. In the size by life module, I increase their size then reduce the spawn rate. Once the balance between size and the spawn rate is found, I finalize the rendering of the smoke by playing with the opacity in the color modules. Less opaque particles, a few tweaks on the speed, looks good now. Don't forget to save your work quite often. One drawback with particles is that when they intersect with static mesh, you can see a hard edge at the intersection. It's not very realistic. To fix this graphical glitch, I add a module called Depth Bias Alpha in the material, which will create a transition, a blending between the particle and the mesh. The material will be heavier to compute, but it's a key to a good rendering. We now see a smooth transition between the particle and the static mesh. An opacity gradient is created to hide the intersection. After a few color and opacity tweak, that's it for our first effects. To sum this all up, the key steps of creating effects are Set up the size of your particles in the math as a starting point. Set up the volume of your effect and the general speed. Tweak the speed for realistic behavior. Change the particle sizes. Finally, optimize the randomness in size and velocity, and finalize the rendering by tweaking both color and opacity values.